Hello friends, my name is Nick and I have a package that we're gonna open today and what's inside this package is alive, but it's not a plant like per usual. We're gonna be opening up some live beneficial insects today and exploring using beneficial insects in the home as a form of pest management. So there are plenty of different routes that you can go when it comes to pest control in the home. There's insecticidal soap, systemic granules, neem oil, spinosad sprays, or Captain Jacks. There are so many, the list goes on. But my favorite form, as of right now, is using beneficial insects in the home as integrated pest management to basically take care of the problem for you. It's basically like task rabbiting pest control into your home. So before we get too involved and get inside this box, let's just discuss some of the basic questions perhaps you might have about using beneficial insects in your home. First and foremost, what kind of insect am I using? What's inside this box? So I use green lacewing larva. I first learned about this from Summer Rain Oaks' YouTube channel a couple years ago. I've been doing this for probably about five years now and I've released them at least like 15 to 20 times. So I have my own perspective and insight on this. I've been doing it enough that I feel confident making this video, but I'm still not the most seasoned person out there when it comes to beneficial insects. So mild disclaimer. There are of course other options of beneficial insects that you can release in your home. Ladybugs might be coming to mind as something perhaps you've released in your garden outside. They do flock towards the lights. So they might flock towards your windows. So that's one reason why I might push you more in the direction of using green lace wings. But I get these from or Bico Organics. It's a website. I'm going to leave it linked in the description below. This is not a sponsored or paid video by any means. I'm just letting you know, pushing you in the right direction as to where you can get these and where I've been getting these from. These are available in different stages of their life. So you can find them for sale as eggs, larva, adults. In the home, I would recommend only going for eggs or larva. But if you can afford it, I would recommend purchasing the larva. It does cost a little bit more than it would to get the eggs, but I've done the eggs a couple times and I do not notice nearly as many of a quantity of the larva after the fact, even though you might be purchasing a thousand eggs versus 400 larva. Trust me, you're not going to get a thousand larva out of those thousand eggs. And the larva themselves are not expensive. I think it's like $25 for the frame, you'll see it when I open it up, but of 400 larva, but you have to get them as overnight shipping. It's like the rules that you have to follow. And that costs another like $35. So this probably cost me between 60 and $70 on the top of my head, I can't remember exactly how much it costs, but roughly in that ballpark, of course, shipping might be different depending on where you are in the United States. I think this came from Arizona and I'm in Pennsylvania, so it could cost more coming from across the country. But just something to keep in mind, if you are tight on cash, I think the eggs are probably only gonna cost you like 15 to $30, including shipping. I'm pulling that number out of my ass, I'll be honest. But uh, like I said, if you can afford it, I would highly recommend going for the larva. You're going to notice such a difference in comparison, I promise you. And while this is my favorite form of pest management, as I said, it does have its drawbacks. So there are two things in particular I would like to talk about that I don't really hear other people talk about, but I'm gonna be brutally honest about these today. I'm not here to sell them to you, I'm just here to inform you about this. So first and foremost, in my opinion, is do they bite? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, not a harsh yes. Like, I'm, I, I don't wanna say yes, but I don't wanna say no. I'm leaning more on yes. And before you click off this video, let me explain. So my first 10 to 15 times releasing these, zero problems, zero bites, was not something that I experienced. I was living in a slightly larger home. I was living in a two bedroom apartment with my roommate at the time, just for reference. If you were watching my videos back then or you stumble across my videos when I'm in a different home, I was releasing them there and had zero problems. And then I moved to my last home, which was probably like a 600 square foot apartment. And I don't know if like, my blood type changed or like something about my pheromones or my body, but the bugs just loved me. I would wake up every morning with new bug bites on me. I probably had like 20 bug bites on me at one point in time. And I was like sleeping with like a hoodie on with like the hood closed. I was not here for it. So I kind of went on a hiatus in my old apartment of releasing them. But now that I'm back in a larger space, I have tried releasing them again and have I had zero bug bites on me since releasing them in this home? No, I've had one or two bug bites on me, but nothing in comparison to what I experienced before. So if you were living in a really small apartment or like a studio apartment or you have only plants in your bedroom, you're gonna be only releasing them in your bedroom or something along those matters, reconsider. Maybe I would consider using other forms of pest management, which I should also say, I should have mentioned before, is I would only really recommend these 
This is majorly important. I should have mentioned this right at the beginning. You do want to make sure that there is enough plant and pest for your 400 larvae. If you only have 20 plants and you're releasing 400 larvae, there's going to be a lot of cannibalism going on, which they are cannibalistic. Probably important thing to say. We'll talk more about that when I show you how they're packaged. But also the other thing I wanted to talk about is, do they stay on the plants? Not necessarily. Sometimes I find them on the wall or on the ceiling or in my bed or on the table, on the couch, on the floor. I'll find my cat just like looking at something on the floor and I'll go over and I see the green leaf on the floor. So I've heard people say in the past that they stick to the plants and don't leave the plants. I don't personally think that's true. So two major things that I think you need to know before bringing these in your home. They don't not bite <laughs> and they won't, they won't not stay on the plants. They're going to be obviously coaxed to stay on the plants where the pests are, but they do like to explore. They are living beings, so they're not going to just stay on your plants. But if you're putting them in a large plant corner, you have like a whole plant shelf or plant cabinet, they're probably going to stay decently put, but there are going to be some stragglers who or explorers more so, who are going to leave the nest. That being said, if you're still on board with this, <laughs> let's get inside this box. I cannot find my box cutter. I have two of them and I can't find either of them. So we're using some scissors today. But we got a little bit of packing paper inside our box here. And if I open it up, we have our little frame that has all of our larvae in it. So it's basically like a cardboard sheet, it's literally what it is, with all the fluting in it, and it's all these separate compartments, if you can see, because as I briefly mentioned, these are cannibalistic. So if they were sitting inside this altogether and I purchased 400 larvae, by the time they got here, there would not be 400 larvae. There would probably be less than half of that, which is also one of the reasons why I wouldn't really recommend getting the eggs, because when they're sitting inside the container they're all just sitting together in some rice holes and some of them will hatch and they will eat each other and i feel like every single time i have gotten the eggs i open it up and i just see a nice big old lace thing on top eating another one so yeah i would highly recommend going for this but i don't know how well you're gonna be able to see maybe you can see a couple things crawling around in the frame i don't want to open it at the moment because we're gonna go for a little field trip but how I release these is I'm going to peel back the film. There is a little bit of just like film, as you can see on both sides of this piece of cardboard. And I'm gonna peel it back and I'm gonna lightly tap. Sometimes you gotta give it a good flick, but oh, one escaped. There's a lace wing right here. You can see it crawling around right there. So it's a decently big one. So that'll be a good one to get started. I have thrips, spider mites, and mealybugs in my home currently. It's a problem that I deal with every summertime and going into like the winter months when it starts to dry out. There's a different time of year for all these different pests, but at the beginning of the summertime, I always have them come out just like, they just come through the vents, they come through the windows, they're just attracted to my plants. I'm not bringing in plants into my home with thrips on them and stuff. They are coming in through the windows. So it's more than likely that if you are experiencing a pest problem in your home yourself, that it probably wasn't an infested plant that you got at a store because that's usually not the case. They are just naturally finding their way to the plants. That's just kind of how it works. So let's get up. We're going to go over to my little plant display area over by my windows and we're going to start releasing these bad boys. I should also mention before we get started that make sure your plants are as dust free as possible. And if you have like really sticky plants like philodendrons that produce a lot of sap, maybe clean them up with some rubbing alcohol. I went around over the past couple days and just went around with a dry cloth and was just all wiping a bunch of leaves, specifically the big ones that like to hold onto a lot of dust because these guys will be just walking around and they will get covered in dust and uh, that can kind of kill them. So yeah, we want our guys to live to be adults which is always exciting when you release them and you kind of just like don't notice them usually unless you're getting bit by them uh, for a couple of weeks. They're just doing their work and then like two or three weeks go by and suddenly it's nighttime and you notice uh, an adult green lace thing flying around. And since they're native to my area of the United States, I just go ahead and bring it outside and release them there if my cat doesn't get to them first because she loves playing with bugs. We're over here in my window and there is this thematophyllum or philodendron here. And you can see those little things that are little dash marks, it looks like, like in, in the crotch 
of the leaf. Those are thrips. So I think we found our landing zone for where we're gonna start dispersing our green lace wings. We've got our little friend from earlier. Just crawling around. I figured before we go ahead and open up the container, we can just go ahead and get him on here and get him started since he looks big. He's probably hungry and I don't want him eating any of his brothers or sisters. There we go. And hopefully he gets snacking sooner than later. They aren't gonna just like immediately go on the plant and start just chowing down. They get kind of confused, but give them a couple of minutes. So I'm just gonna take this and peel it back just a little bit. Let's expose like 10 compartments or so. You can see them crawling around in there. This one's escaping already right there. So let's just go ahead and get our sticker. I like to place them when I can instead of, you know, just tossing them. Makes me feel a little bit better about it, but oops, almost just cut that guy's head off. There we go. And he's home, hopefully gonna find some pastor. I don't think there's really anything on that ficus, but still better safe than sorry. Got another one, and I think I'll put him on the thematophyllum as well, because this guy's got a couple of thrips. I think I want at least like three to five patrolling this guy, but I want to keep them on separate leaves at first so they don't go eating each other. And I brought home this philodendron plowmanii from the Philadelphia Flower Show, and he has just not been happy with me, and it's gotten spider mites. It's just screaming out that he just does not want to be alive. So let's go ahead and tap a couple on there. So Got one on there. So you can see, oh, there's two of them on the same leaf. Oh gosh, starting some warfare. And then we'll just tap around, disperse a couple on some of the other plants in the area. Don't want to tap too hard, of course. You don't want them to go like flying, flying, but I will give it a flick every now and again if it's not like there's no movement happening. I got a runner. There we go. Let's, let's get him off me before he gets a snack. It was a fast one. If you are afraid of bugs, I don't think you're gonna have a good time with this. Which I'm not like a fan of bugs, but there's already bugs in my home. So I'm bringing in these bugs to get rid of the bad bugs. And then when there's no more bad bugs, these bugs are just gonna die or leave. So it takes care of itself. We can just go around and tap and disperse where we see fit. And I just noticed there was one biting me right here, one biting me right here, because I'm not really paying attention specifically as I'm filming this as I normally would be. So I'm gonna just go wash my hands. I don't think that's really gonna keep me from getting a bug bite, but still just makes me feel better. I'm sure it's not making you feel any better right now. <laughs> just go ahead and still just disperse these. And then, you know what, I think this is good in this window for at least a good corner of them. So I think we'll move over to the next window. So we'll tap, tap, tap. I don't think the pest problems are as bad in this area, but we still want it to be as widespread as possible with this pest control. It's kind of the point. Oh, just kidding. I either these are spider web or spider mite webs over on Discidia, so I'm sure a couple of these will help out, that's for certain. And then make sure that these Hoyas have some on them because there's always some hidden mealy bug. I'm doing a hand check, making sure they're not on me. I'm not getting any more bug bites than the two that I've already gotten, at least in this initial thing. I can't stop them from biting me in my sleep. I'm not trying to scare you with that. I have not had that problem in this home yet. But like I said, oh, oh no. We got some cannibalism going on. Do you see that? Oh, we're gonna have to do something about that. Let's get some on here on this plant this philodendron and all the other philodendrons just scream out to the thrips. Once again, see them all crawling around. They are alive today. They are ready to get to their, their host plants. And let's just finish off by this philodendron today to disperse a couple more before I go ahead and just do it on my own time so I can really freaking focus and not get bit. Trust me. I know I'm like, it's a problem, but if you're able to focus a little bit more than I am when you're doing this, you're gonna have a much easier of a time not getting bit. But I'm like not, not convinced that everyone else who releases these is also getting bit by them and is just too embarrassed to admit it. 
this one on my hand. I swear they are normally not this fast too. Like, I don't know what's in the water today or what they've been putting in this food. All right, I've gone around and I've released all that I can from the hex, from doing all my tapping and stuff like that. Only one more made it loose down to my elbow and gave me a little bite, but from there, I'm good. It's only going to be a matter of if they bite me now that they are dispersed in the home. But since I'm left with this grid and it's still crawling with them, um, there's still at least like 20 of these guys in there. I don't know if you can really see, but uh, they have been through enough of my assaulting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in here within all these plants. They will work their way out eventually and onto these plants and we'll start eating the pests. They're probably just going to be eating the food that's left inside that hex container for now. And this piece of fabric that was used to cover up the hex is also crawling with some more lace wings. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just place it somewhere where I see fit, where I could use these extra lace wings to go and help out a little bit more. But from here, that's really all there is to do other than wait and make sure that there are no more <laughs> lace things crawling on you. <gasps> There's one of my shorts. We'll find you a good home, buddy. It's just not going to be eating me. That's for certain. He's right there. It's fine. God, that one just tried to bite me as well. I don't know if I am just delicious or something, but... They love me, and like I said, no one else talks about getting eaten by them. I literally feel like they're crawling all over me, but they're not. Anyway, like I said, the point of this video was not to entice you into getting green lace things. In fact, you're probably like, why is it your favorite method? Because I have so many freaking plants that it's just so much easier just to deal with the initial releasing of these bugs and to not have to worry about it. They're going to not eradicate my pest problem, but they're going to eat a lot of those thrips, emulae bugs, and spider mites, especially the ones that are in places that I don't even know. But there's still some pests in my home in a couple of weeks, and I can break out some alcohol wipes and some systemic granules and Captain Jack spray and all that stuff, but I do not want to use any of that stuff while the lace things are active in my home because they are insects, and insecticide will kill them. So buyer beware there, I guess. You don't want to spend $70 on beneficial insects and accidentally kill them or throw your plants in the shower and wash them away or something like that. So clean all your plants beforehand, like I said. Make sure that your home is ready and inviting for your green, green lace wings to go ahead and explore and find all those pests that are hiding in places that, like I said, you probably don't know about. You can see on my hand, it's not like, I guess there's kind of a little bug bite spot already forming, but it's just getting a little bit red. It's not, not the end of the world, it's just like a mosquito bite, but it's just, it's not my favorite thing but is it worth it? Yeah, in this place it's worth it. In my old home when I was getting eaten alive by them in my sleep, no, that was not worth it. But I'm kind of just like weighing it. I thought it was worth a try when I moved into my larger home. So biggest takeaway of this video is if you live in a small home, maybe reconsider using particularly the lace wings. Ladybugs might be a different story and bugs like that, but uh, yeah, maybe reconsider the green lace wings and stick with a keen eye and a quick hand when it comes to those pests. But that's going to do it for this video, just sharing my preferred method of pest control and just sharing with you me getting eaten alive in the process. We love it. Thank you so much for joining me. If you don't already, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Philly Foliage. Subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.